Welcome to Bladed Tech Musings, the channel dedicated to retro tech, innovation, science, and technological entertainment. It is official, Boeing has canceled its $4.2 billion planned purchase of 80% of Embraer's commercial airliner business. The full implications of this breakup will take months to bubble to the surface, but suffice it to say that the post-pandemic aviation environment will appreciably change. Boeing's move to distance itself from Embraer will leave the aviation giant no commercial answer to French aviation rival Airbus's purchase of Bombardier and the A220 narrow-body medium-range jet airliner. Boeing stopped manufacturing the McDonnell Douglas-derived 717 medium-range jet airliner in 2006 and has no scheduled replacement. The Embraer deal was intended to combat Airbus's entry into the medium-range jet market, a market heretofore had been ignored by Boeing and Airbus. Of course, at the Bladed Tech channel, we are more interested in the space industry than the aviation industry, so let us take a look at the impact the Boeing Embraer breakup has on the space race, and what we can expect in the future out of Embraer in space development. Boeing had always relied on its ability to outmuscle the Canadian Bombardier in the aviation market. That all changed when Airbus bought out Bombardier's commercial airliner unit. The French company was out of Boeing's political reach, unlike its unlucky former rivals like McDonnell Douglas and Rockwell International in the States. Boeing scrambled, looking for a way to counter the Airbus move. Chinese aircraft manufacturers were out of the question, so that left really only one option. Brazil's Embraer. After years of high commodity prices in world markets where Brazil enjoyed an extensive economic renaissance, culminating with Brazil's hosting of the 2016 Summer Olympics in Rio de Janeiro, commodity prices collapsed. China had been the main driver of the commodity boom as part of its quest to modernize its cities and infrastructure, but the Asian giant's economy started to cool and the CCP put on the brakes. Brazil's government and industries were suddenly starving for cash and Embraer which relies heavily on both to buy its products, suddenly needed a partner to help it fund long-range aviation development programs. Boeing had been exploring the possibility of buying Embraer since 2017, but Brazil's government, which has super shares in Embraer giving it veto power over any management decisions at the company, balked. In 2018, the two companies agreed to a memorandum of understanding that would create an 80-20 joint venture that would own Embraer's airline business. But again, elements in the Brazilian government blocked the sale. A change of power in the Brazilian government finally lifted the legal roadblock to the purchase, and in February of 2019, the partnership was approved. It is finally uh, done between Boeing and the Brazilian aircraft, uh, aircraft company Embraer. Here is the deal of a joint venture being announced between Boeing and Embraer. By the way, there's still some final details that need to be worked out, but in principle, they've got it locked in. It is an 80-20 joint venture with Boeing owning 80% of the joint venture, Embraer owning 20%. It's basically will be working on the regional airline component of what Embraer brings to the table. It will not include business jets or executive jets, and it does not include the military side of the business from Embraer. That was a sticking point for a long time. That is separate from this joint venture between Boeing and Embraer. Remember, this is all in response, not all, but largely in response to the agreement between uh, Airbus and Bombardier when it comes to production of the C-Series, which is that smaller uh, commercial airplane, that seating between 100 and 140 uh, passengers, which is a, a hot part of the market that is expected to grow rather quickly in the future. Boeing. Whenever you see two companies join together, let's look at Boeing, for example, unchanged, Embraer off 9%. Who needed this deal more? Well, you would argue Embraer needed it more, but it doesn't look like they got a particularly good end of the, uh, the equation here. So, look, Embraer is small. They were subscale in this space. Uh, Boeing, it's interesting, Boeing had for a long time sort of played down any need to go into the smaller jet business. When Bombardier did the deal with Airbus last year, they said, you know, whatever, we don't need to compete. Um, now, they've done this deal. They've been talking about it for a while. So the market has been getting socialized towards the idea. And look, it looks like the market... Shortly after the agreement was signed, Boeing became embroiled in the 737 MAX scandal, which grounded the 737 MAX global fleet, squeezing Boeing's liquidity. 
but Boeing showed every sign of being committed to the $4.2 billion deal and began assigning executives and resources to the new operations, as well as forming new operating divisions for commercial aviation and defense. Then the pandemic hit in January of 2020, and by March, the entire aviation industry had come to a halt, leaving Boeing, already weakened by the 737 MAX fleet grounding, looking for ways to save on cash. And the most obvious target for cost savings was the Embraer deal. There is a $100 million breakup fee in the deal, but that was an acceptable sacrifice to free up more than $4 billion of funding. The breakup leaves Embraer reeling and short of cash for its ambitious plans in the small business jets, defense, and space markets. The $4.2 billion deal was for only its airliner business, with a cash injection expected to help the company bolster its prospects and its other businesses. Embraer's major defense-related product is the KC-390 Military Airlifter, marketed by Boeing as the C-390 Millennium. Embraer had been developing the C-390 since 2006. The Brazilian government placed an order for two prototypes in 2009, and Embraer delivered the first unit in late 2014. The aircraft has been undergoing civilian military certification in the intervening years. The military airlift market is dominated by Lockheed Martin's C-130 turboprop aircraft, originally developed in 1953 and improved over the decades. Dozens of countries, including the United States, fly the C-130, and there are no U.S.-built replacement craft on the horizon. The Boeing C-17 is a much larger aircraft and is designed for a different mission. Boeing, seeing an opportunity to stick a fork into its rival Lockheed, agreed to jointly market and sell the C-390 as a C-130 replacement. Those plans are in limbo now that the Embraer airliner deal is defunct. Embraer's space ambitions are currently limited to satellite development. It operates a joint venture with Brazilian telecommunications company Telebras called Visiona Space Technology. The venture's sole product to date was the Brazilian Geostationary Defense and Strategic Communications Satellite, which was launched on an Ariana Space Ariane 5 rocket from their spaceport in French Guiana. Visiona built the satellite with technical assistance from French-Italian company Talos Elenia Space. Viewers may be surprised to learn that the Brazilian Space Agency has its own spaceport in Alcantara, a location on the northern coast of Brazil. The Alcantara Launch Center was built in 1982, and the first rocket launch occurred there in 1990. The Brazilian Air Force has conducted dozens of test launches of smaller sensor payload rockets from the facility, but the spaceport currently lacks the necessary infrastructure to launch heavier rockets. The Brazilian Space Agency has explored the possibility of outfitting the spaceport to be able to launch Israeli Shavit, Russian Proton, or Ukrainian Tesklon-4 rockets, but to date nothing has come out of those talks. The United States has made it plain that it does not want Brazil launching medium rockets, and has likely pressured both the Ukraine and Israel not to entertain technology transfers. Russia's main ally in the region is Venezuela, and that relationship has been sufficient to stall progress in that direction. Thus, Embraer has no current plans to launch rockets and satellites from Alcantara. The U.S. Space Force, in spite of the fact that it has been assigned the 61st Air Base Group, does not operate air transport craft. The 61st Air Base Group currently operates the Los Angeles Air Force Base, which, in spite of its name, has nothing to do with aircraft and instead provides support to the Space and Missile Systems Center. The 61st ABG last operated C-130 aircraft in 1992, and thus is not likely to be considering the C-390 for purchase in any near-term scenario. What do you think of the breakup between Boeing and Embraer and its impact on the commercial and defense aviation industries and spacecraft development? Share with us by dropping a comment below. We hope you enjoyed this briefing on Boeing and Embraer. If so, click that like button. Clicking the subscribe button and the bell notification icon will also help you stay informed when new episodes are released. Links to previous space industry related episodes and our other content can be found below. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed, where we 
we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed. Make sure you follow our Twitter account where all new episodes are announced. And finally, join us on our Facebook page where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.